Hi, my name is Andreas Kasten. I work for Youth Policy Labs, a think and do tank based in Berlin. We currently run a big strategic partnership with a partner organization from German speaking countries on digital youth work. And we are part of Ray and its transnational research team. And one of the research projects that we currently coordinate is called Ray Digi, and it focuses on digitalization and youth work. I'm a nerd, I guess. I studied math and computer science. My very first vocational training was as a radio journalist, so I was always affiliated with media. I was a youth activist and youth media organizations. And one of the very first events that I remember organizing around digital youth work was in 2008 in Estonia in Tallinn called Non-Formal Education Goes World Wide Web. And one of the first research events that really struck me around digitalization was in 2014 at Harvard University on the internet and young people and what research has to say about that. And very recently in 2018, one of the kickoff events also for our projects was a meeting with youth organizations from Germany where it became clear again how important and urgent it is to help youth workers become better at digital things in youth work. There are several reasons why I personally and also Youth Policy Labs as an organization is so interested in digital youth work. Uh, one of them is that we find that the current discourse and research is pretty lopsided and still mainly focuses on the risks of the internet, on the dangers for children and young people, on protecting them from it and deals very little with the potential, the power dynamics, the ambition, the role it could play in educating young people. So it has a very protective and problem focused spin at the moment. And similarly in youth work practice, in our experience, much of what we do in digital youth work at the moment comes from media education and is evolving around media literacy. But there are many other aspects to digital youth work that are worth exploring for and with young people. Another one is that we see that the distance between young people and youth workers is growing because the web and the internet and digital devices are so much a normal everyday part of young people's lives. And at the same time, they're such an alien and strange and foreign part of many youth workers' lives. And that takes the two apart. And we think that shouldn't be the case. So what excites me about digital youth work is really a very long list. So I try to be short and I try and focus it on youth work because obviously there's a lot around digitalization and society that's exciting too. But one of the things that I find personally very exciting is how digital spaces shift power dynamics in youth work. Because in youth work, we are used to conducting youth work in particular formats, say in a youth club, and youth workers host these youth clubs. They design them, they maybe co-design them with young people, but they are the ones who are the gatekeepers. And young people are the guests and the users. And on the web and in online spaces, this changes because young people know these spaces so much better than most youth workers in most contexts that it's almost turning uh, the power dynamics around. Young people are the host and youth workers are the guests and users. And I find it very exciting exciting to think about what that does to youth work and how it helps level the playing field and working at I level and changes hierarchy dynamics in youth work. Another part of the current development that really excites me is that maker and tinker culture finally arrives in youth work. And I find it really weird that the two have coexisted for such a long time, but it's really nice to see that young people just doing things becomes part of youth work in digital context. And that's really cool. And then a third aspect that I find really exciting is to help what we call YEADS, youth workers not excited or educated about digitalization. So to help YEADS understand why and how digitalization can and should be fun. In our experience and from the research that we conduct, the key issue in digital youth work at the moment is accessibility. And that's something that's been, of course, reverberated by the pandemic, where we have seen both in formal and in non-formal learning context, in particular young people from disadvantaged backgrounds falling off the grid and getting out of reach of youth work. And there are several layers and dimensions to that we need to start paying attention to more closely in youth work. One is, of course, simply having the technical possibilities, having a device that you don't share with other people in your family, for example, 
or at least have access to at the time when youth work happens, to have a device with connectivity and have then good connectivity, which is still a big issue for uh, many families, for many young people. A third one that we always underestimate is have access to a private space. So imagine you're involved in youth work with young queer people who may not necessarily have come out to their parents or their family yet, um, but they are involved in a queer youth group in your youth club or your youth organization. They need to have a private space where they can talk about these issues, otherwise they won't be able to talk. So that's a really important aspect that we uh, tend to overlook at the moment. And because we focus so much on the technological side of it, but the privacy, the space, access to an area where you can speak openly and speak freely is as crucial as having the technology technological side and the skills to use it. So in principle, what we advocate for and argue for is to not start separate evaluation systems for digital youth work alone. In principle, we should apply the same quality standards and criteria that we apply to youth work in any other space, also to youth work in digital contexts. So one of the first things we should always do is make sure that the sequence of aim, objective, and methodology actually works and builds on each other and makes a coherent package. But then there are some aspects to a digital youth work that are specific and that we need to look at in more detail. One is what I talked about earlier, accessibility. Another one is to ask ourselves, which compromises are we currently making? To give you an example of what that could mean, very often companies that offer online services do that for free, but in return, they deal with the data that we as the users of that software provide them with. And then ask yourself, is that a compromise you're willing to make? So would you do that in analog use work in the same way? Would you agree that the mayor of the city that you work in has a camera in your youth club while you talk with young people just because they provide the youth club to you for free? So try and level the compromises you make in digital spaces with the ones that you would be willing or not be willing to do in analog spaces and take decisions around the quality of youth work based on that. And I have to say, in my experience, youth workers don't need to show policymakers that digital youth work is great and works great. It's almost the other way around that policymakers are ahead of youth work here and have provided the policy framework, have provided funding streams, have provided political backing for digital youth work. And youth work practitioners are the ones that need to be convinced and that need convincing to actually start doing digital youth work. That has, of course, changed in the pandemic, not to some extent, and youth work has caught up. But it's much more an issue of practice emerging than it is of policy frameworks being built. That said, if you need a few great examples of what digital youth work can do, there certainly are some. TinCon, the Teenage Internet Convention, very cool face-to-face -face youth work format where young people exclusively among themselves speak about issues around the internet all the way from policy to sexuality, all the way from protection to empowerment, and where every single speaker is below the age of 21. So it's young internet users and internet shapers who bring together the TinCon, a, a really cool project. Girls Who Code, a fantastic worldwide movement that specifically develops education in summer camps for girls and young women to learn how to write code and develop software and not only use use the internet, but shape the internet actively. The Trevor Project, an LGBTQI youth movement that has built a whole slew of web-based services to support young queer people um, who are in need of support. Uh, a project that started in the US, but exists now around the world. And maybe the last one is a, is a project that started in Germany from one of the partners of our digital youth work project, uh, the Open Knowledge Foundation, called Youth is Hacking. And it's very much around the make culture and young people producing and creating things in laboratories. So one of the things that they've done, for example, is create CO2 traffic lights for classrooms and schools so that they see when the air gets too bad and they have to start airing a very practical example of what young hackers can do if we let them. This is, is first and foremost if you do not have an authentic online presence somewhere, 
it will be very hard for you to do good digital youth work. You don't have to be everywhere and you don't have to be necessarily even be where young people are predominantly. Whether you start using Twitter, whether you do Instagram, whether you do TikTok, whether you become a YouTuber, it doesn't matter. But one of these spaces, you need to start making your own. And one great way of doing that is take one of the hobbies that you have, take one of the things that you really, really like doing, music, cooking, playing sports, and try to find where that hobby exists online and then connect to that community. And that way, do something online that you want to do as a person, as a human, that's fun for you. And it will really help you develop digital youth work along the road. Another recommendation that I have is treat digital youth work like chocolate. So don't make it this special separate thing that's distinct from everything else. When you eat a piece of chocolate, you don't say to yourself, oh my, I'm entering the world of chocolate now. And now I'm enjoying a piece of chocolate. And when the piece of chocolate is gone, you're not saying, oh, I'm going back to the world of non-chocolate now. But this is how at the moment we treat digital spaces quite often. We see them as very separate and we see them as behind a screen. But for young people, they are not. For young people, they are like chocolate. They are everywhere and you enjoy them. And sometimes you don't like them and sometimes they are really bad, but most of the time it's great and helpful. So treat digital use work like chocolate. Mm -hmm. And finally, learn from young people. It's maybe hard to accept, but young people know so much more about digital spaces, including the internet and how to use them than most of us do. Use it as an opportunity. Don't be afraid of it. Young people are, in our experience, really eager, happy, and keen to help because they don't necessarily understand themselves that they know so much more about it than we do in youth work. But once they discover that, they really are happy and glad to help and take us along and show us around and help us getting our feet on the ground in the web. So let's do it. Mm -hmm.